This video covers the finance solver on your graphics calculator. It's also known as a TVM solver. TVM stands for the time value of money. So different calculators and different textbooks either call it one of these two things, but they are the same thing. Now this concept is useful in, um, in topic one, number and algebra under financial mathematics. And where it becomes useful and where it's actually required is mainly, let's just write these down, with loan questions. So loans and also annuities. The finance solver um, is very useful for these two and actually some questions won't be able to be solved uh, without the use of the finance solver. You can pretend to use it for compound interest as well. However, I find that most compound interest exam questions actually require using the formula. The question is structured in a way that you need to show you're working with, um, with the use of the formula. Okay, so the aim of this video is just to go through each of these different input fields and to explain how to think about them, how to input values, um, and also there's some sort of important considerations around the third and fourth sections as to how to think about positive or negative numbers. Before we go into each field, let's just recap how we actually find it on our calculator. So for the TI Inspire, uh, we go menu, number eight, finance, and then number one, finance solver, and that's it there. All the same fields as what I have on my screen here. Okay, so let's go through them one by one. The first one here is N, and that stands for number of periods. Now, uh, it's a common misconception or error to think that this is number of years. It's actually not, it's number of periods. So if the, if the um, payment frequency is in months, then the N will be a number of months. So for example, if a loan was over say two years, but it's paid back on a monthly basis, the end value would actually be 24, not two. Very common cause of error there. The next field, I, uh, this is a pretty straightforward one there. Uh, I don't see students making errors on this one. This is just the annual interest rate. Um, nearly every time the interest rate is given to you in annual form as a percentage form, so you just need to simply just enter that number in there. Don't convert it to a decimal, keep it as a percentage and keep it in annual form. Okay, the next field is PV, that stands for present value. I like to think of it as initial value. And before we get into whether it's positive or negative, let's just firstly talk about what it means. Present value is the money at the start. So for example, if I receive a loan from a bank for uh, $100,000, let's say for a home loan, the present value will be $100,000. If I roll my money into an annuity for $300,000, the present value will be $300,000, it's that initial amount. If I invest money into a, um, into a pension fund, let's say for $500,000, that present value will be $500,000. So that's the size of the number. In terms of whether it's positive or negative, I often see students get this, um, make, a, make a hiccup on this. And I like to think about it as thinking it in terms of cash flow. So if the money is going away from you, it's going out of your bank account, that'll be negative. If the money's coming towards you, if it's coming into your bank account, it'll be positive. So for example, if you receive a loan from a bank, a home loan for $100,000, that money is coming towards you, so it's gonna be positive. Uh, the converse of that is if you invest into a annuity, the money is going away from you into the annuity provider, so it's gonna be negative. The next field is payments each period. So not payments each year, payments each period. So for example, if you're repaying a loan on a monthly basis, the amount that you're paying back to the bank, that'll be this value here. And the way to think about positive or negative is the exactly the same as what I just discussed. If you're paying money back to the bank, even though you're paying your loan off, it's going away from you, so it'll be negative. Okay, the next one is the future value. So that's the value at the end. So if you invest into say a pension plan over a course of a period of years, the future value FE will be the final amount. Um, a loan usually ends up at zero. Sometimes you don't fully repay the loan, but if you do fully repay the loan, that means the loan is squared off and it'll be zero. Same for an annuity, usually that finishes at zero. The payments per year. So if you're making monthly payments, that'll be 12. If you're making quarterly repayments, that'll be four. If the payments are annual, that'll be one. So that's just how many times just the payments occur in an annual basis. Now this one here, PPY payments per year, is very closely linked to the top one, number of periods. 
If everything's in monthly form, such as paying a loan back monthly, the the end, the periods will be in months. So often these two are linked. It's important to think through payments per year and end. Compounding periods per year, this will probably be told to you in the exam question. It'll say, uh, this investment vehicle gets a 5% return compounding something. Pond compounding monthly will be 12 here for compounding periods per year. Compounding quarterly will be four. Compounding semi-annually will be two. Compounding annually will be one. And finally, the um, these are this is a this is an option either begin or either beginning or end. And what that means is, does the payment occur at the beginning or at the end of the period? So, for example, if I'm having monthly repayments back to a bank on a loan that I took out, does that payment occur at the start or at the end of the month? Or another example, if I'm receiving fixed payments for an annuity that I have invested in, do I receive that money? at the start or at the end of the period. So you need to sort of make a decision on that one there. And usually it's set in the question that the repayments are made at the start of the month or at the end of the month, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that covers the finance solver. I highly recommend practicing both loan and annuity questions over in the question bank section.